Assalamu alaikum everyone. In today's video, I am going to give you a presentation on sedimentary structures. So let's start. Sedimentary structures are large tail features uh, that represent physical, chemical, biological process that operated in depositional environment. There are four types of sedimentary structure which are erosional, uh, depositional, post-depositional and biogenic sedimentary structure. Here are some of the example of sedimentary structures. Flute marks, groove marks, gutter cast, impact marks, channel and scours are example of erosional sedimentary structure. Bedding, lamination, graded bedding, etc. are example of depositional sedimentary structure. Uh, where slide and slums, convolute beddings, overturned cross bedding, load structure are examples of post depositional sedimentary structure. And uh, there are some examples of biogenic structure which are resting traces, crawling traces, boring, etc. Now let's study erosional sedimentary structures. First, here you can see flute marks structure which gives indication of flow, flow direction. For example, here you can see a flute marks uh, that is rounded shaped uh, which flares downstream and merges into the bedding plane. Here is groove marks uh, which are elongated nearly uh, straight straight ridges uh, that result from the infilling of groups produced by some object dragged over a mud bottom in continuous contact with the bottom. It also an indicator of paleocurrent. Here is gutter cast. Gutter cast is similar uh, like groove marks but the difference is gutter cast is not made by any object where a uh, groove mark is produced by some object dragged over a mud bottom. Here you can see channel and scours uh, which can be recognized by a cutting of bedding plane and lamination in underlying sediments. It's a structure of fluvial origin. Next uh, let's study depositional sedimentary structures. Uh, here you can see bedding and uh, here you can see lamination. There is a thickness difference. Bedding is generally defined as a sedimentary layer. It is thicker than 1 cm. But lamination is a sedimentary layer that is less than 1 cm in thickness. Here you can see graded bedding. Here is normal graded bedding which is finding upward sequence. Graded bedding can be defined as an upward decline of uh, grain size within a bed. Uh, graded beds are strata recognized by gradual change in grain size. Here is another uh, example of depositional sedimentary structure which is cross bedding and cross lamination. The downstream migration of ripples and dunes under condition of net sedimentation give rise to cross bedding. Here are three types of cross bedding which are tabular cross bedding, trap cross bedding and hearing bone cross bedding. In tabular cross bedding the bounding surfaces are planar. In trap cross bedding uh, beds are layer of sediment that are inclined relative uh, to the base and top of the bed that are associated of. Hearing bone uh, cross bedding formed in tidal areas because of the current periodically flows in the opposite direction. Here you can see mud cracks. It's really common in fine grain sediment. It is formed uh, through desiccation. They indicate subaerial exposure. It only form in environments where sediment is exposed above water. It only uh, form in environment where sediment is exposed above water. Next depositional structure is heterolithic bed. Here are three types of heterolithic bed. Uh, they are laser bedding, wavy bedding, lenticular bedding. First, uh, let's know what is heterolithic bed. Well, uh, heterolithic bed is a sedimentary structure made up of uh, interbedded deposit of sand and mud. For example, in uh, laser bedding, it is sand dominated. 
Laser mating is forming a high energy environment. Uh, it's a special type of ripple cross lamination in which thin streak of mud occur between the sets of ripple lamina. Wavy mating is a mixture of 50-50 uh, sand and mud, means equal. Um, usually common uh, in environment that alternate frequently from higher to lower energy. Lenticular bedding is mainly mud dominated. It's a ripple cross lamination in which sand lenses are discontinuous and uh, isolated. It's a usually form in low energy condition. Next is post depositional sedimentary structure uh, which are uh, slide and slumps, convolute bedding, load cast. Here you can see uh, slide and slumps. Slump involves significant internal deformation and slide sedimentary structure refer to downslope mass movement of sediment upon a glide plan uh, with little internal deformation of the sediment. Here you can see convolute bedding. Convolute bedding develops in cross and planar laminated strata. It is common in turbidite beds where rapid sedimentation occur. The probable causes of convolute bedding are differential liquefaction, lateral, vertical, intratarsal flow, shearing of surface by currents, etc. Then let's study load cast. Here you can see load cast, which is a common sole structure seen as bulbous downward directed bed into underlying sediment. Next, uh, let's uh, know some biogenic sedimentary structure. Here you can see dwelling burrows, which are formed by sessile and semi sessile endobenthic animals, particularly suspension feeders, predators, and scavengers. The burrows can be simple vertical tube as colithos U shaped, or it can be more complicated burrow systems. Here you can see resting traces which are formed by vesile epibenthic animals. They are the impressions uh, showing the broad shape of the animal. Then there are crawling traces which is also called locomotory traces which are made by any mobile animal. The trails and trackways of moving animals are usually linear or sinus and uncomplicated. Vertebrate footprints are relatively common throughout the Mesozoic and Cenozoic time. Then let's discuss about the uses of sedimentary structures. Sedimentary structures are guide to build a stratigraphic order by determining uh, of top and bottom. It also helps us to interpret uh, the depositional environment. It guides us to determine the agent, whether it is wind or water, etc. Sedimentary structure help us to deduce uh, the paleocurrent pattern and paleogeography. It also useful to assess chemical changes after deformation. Next, let's know how a sedimentary structure can be applied to find out formation top and bottom. A geologist can determine the top or bottom of a sedimentary formation by using surface feature like ripples, mud cracks, raindrops, footprints. You can identify top or bottom uh, by using bottom uh, surface feature like load cast. There are also uh, other features that are helpful for identify formation top and bottom which are geopetal, bioturbation, stromatolites, flame structure, pillow lavas, cross bedding and graded bedding etc. For example, if you uh, look at this uh, flame structure, pointed part is top of this formation. There are also cross bedding, graded bedding that are helpful for identifying the formation top and bottom. That's all for today. Hope you like this video. This video seems helpful to you. Please like and subscribe Earth Detective and also visit our YouTube channel where we uploaded lot of videos based on Earth Science. We also organized the videos in playlists based on topics. Feel free to explore and suggest us what you want to learn. You can also check description for links of our social media. 
website for resources, PowerPoint file and further discussion. Thanks for watching.